As Pride Month comes to a close, we wanted to share the story of someone very special to many of us and the impact he has had on the LGBTQ plus community in East Tennessee. Bill Williams was the first in our area to report on a disease that was killing mostly gay men back in the 1980s. At the time, very little was known about AIDS and HIV, and most people were looking the other way. But Bill faced it head on, getting the facts like any good journalist to share a story that hits very close to home. Robin Wilhoyt has this personal story. 32-year-old Randy Boswell was one of those 26,000 people who have died with AIDS. It was one of the top stories of the 1980s. The AIDS epidemic and its attack on typically healthy young men, most of whom were gay. Many East Tennesseans didn't know much about AIDS or HIV. But that all changed thanks to Bill Williams. Well, 1987 is when I did the first report on, on AIDS. Of course, AIDS was not even, we, we weren't aware of AIDS until the early 80s. And then it became an epidemic and people were scared to death. Professionally, Bill had an obligation to tell the story of AIDS. But he also wanted to learn everything he could about it for personal reasons. I wanted to do the report because my son, my son Mark, uh, was uh, living with AIDS. Uh, discovered it in the same year, 1987. Bill worked closely with Dr. Richard Rose, one of the few doctors in the area who treated AIDS to get the facts. He was so caring and so giving. He was caring so much that he, he couldn't do that forever. He finally had to give up that, that kind of practice because all his patients were dying. And it was just too hard on him. Through Dr. Rose, Bill shared the facts about how AIDS spread and cleared up some common misconceptions. And I've tried to make very clear in my reporting was he couldn't get AIDS by shaking hands or, or sitting next to somebody or, or being, breathing the same air. You need not get AIDS that way. Again, it was very, very close to me because my son was, was living with AIDS and eventually died with AIDS. So it was a very personal thing that I, I needed to know more about and I needed to let our viewers know about. Christopher Hamblin says many in the local LGBTQ plus community credit Bill with being willing to tackle a subject that most didn't even want to talk about. No one else was reporting that story. Sometimes at the time, Ronald Reagan would not even say the word AIDS from the into a microphone. But in East Tennessee, we had Bill Williams educating us. Before he died, Mark Williams asked Bill to go shopping for a casket. He also asked his father to put together a video for his funeral. He was an extraordinary, extraordinary man. He was good looking. He was talented. I'm Mark Williams reporting from San Francisco for Eyewitness News. He could sing. So put them hands back in the pan and put your silly around. He could speak uh, extremely intelligent. Okay, not the tallest, but the shortest. You got it. Scared me. He was so smart. I was very, very proud of my son. Mark Williams was 35 years old when he died. Today, AIDS isn't the death sentence it once was. It's a manageable disease. Bill says he is proud of the impact Mark's story had in educating East Tennessee. I like to think of the fact that, that, that my son Mark and his dealing with AIDS and his death because of AIDS and my ability to tell the story of AIDS and, par and a part of the story of Mark, my ability to do that made a difference in this community, in this world, made it a little bit more understandable, a little bit more acceptable. There are going to be people who, who are still going to shake their head and say, I not want to hear anything about it, it doesn't exist, I don't want to know. But there, it, it is, I think, now it's, people could say, okay, I, I see and I know God, a lot wants us to love and be loved. And I remember an old preacher saying this, God don't make no junk. My son was a marvelous, marvelous man. He died of AIDS because he was homosexual. He was loved by God because God don't make no junk. That was Robin Wilhoyt with that story. And we do want to thank LGBTQ plus activist and Bill Williams fan Christopher Hamlin for reminding us about this story and just how important Bill's work was to the local gay community. We need to learn to be convinced 
that you can't get AIDS by reaching out a hand to help. Well, Christopher even interviewed Bill years ago for a special concert at the Tennessee Unitarian Universalist Church. That interview and concert was part of a World AIDS Day celebration called Forget Me Nots. And in 2014, the Hope Center in Knoxville displayed a quilt with the names of 28 people who lost their lives to AIDS. Mark Williams was one of them.